believe it or not, I've got all the beast handlers on the screen right now. Ho ho. Besides the fifth tiers, they're all here now. And now it's time for us to do science. All right, guys, uh, we're here to do some beast handler science for you guys to help you understand the beast handlers better and how to best use and utilize all of their powers. Now, I want to let you guys know that I'm just coming down off of a pretty intense migraine, which I don't get all that often, but uh, I slept really bad last night. I think it caused some issues, and, and I'm, I'm struggling right now. So please bear with me if I make any mistakes or anything like that. Just correct me in the comments, and we'll try to get on with our lives. So I think the most important thing to understand about Beast Handlers right now is that Beast Handlers are very funky and weird, and that's why they're probably in the sport category. They don't really make that much sense, or they're not intuitively just there to do pops based on how much money you spend. Depends on how you're using them, which ones you're using, how you end up merging them together, and how much beast power you get for each one of your beasts. So the first and most important thing that you need to understand when dealing with beasts is that each different beast is going to give you a certain amount of beast power. So for example, Piranha is going to give you, let's talk about the water towers first. But the tier 1s are going to give you 1 beast power, the tier 2s are going to give you 3 total, the tier 3s are going to give you 8 total, the tier 4s are going to give you 16 total, and then the tier 5s will end up giving you 84 total. But it does take a full-on 4 4th tier beast handlers to make that happen, but there are technically other options available to us. That being said... What we want to talk about today is how effective is this beast power and does it make sense? So I think the easiest thing and most important way to understand this is that uh, it's kind of similar to banana farms. For example, when you have a banana farm, it makes, for example, $80 in one round. And then it, let's say it costs $800, it would take 10 rounds to pay for itself, right? That kind of makes sense. We can like make this a number and then we can kind of compare that number with other things. Well, I've decided to try to turn Beast Handler's beast power into a number that everybody can understand. And that's where we're at right now. So I've decided to make you guys this wonderful little beast chart. And I want to explain this beast chart, and I know that this is not math class or whatnot, but this will really honestly help you understand the beast handler so much better. So just pay attention for a few minutes, and I think you'll get this down very, very easily. So the issue is, is that each different beast gives you a different amount of beast power, and that beast power is going to cost you a certain amount of money. Kind of like the banana farm upgrades are kind of different money depending on which tiers you're going for. So... Each tier is going to take a certain amount of money to get a beast power. And what you're noticing is that for tier 1s, and I should, okay, let's explain this really quickly. So this is the cost per beast point. And what that means is that we want to separate three different lines because they are three different upgrade paths and they're all going to cost different amounts. So for the bottom path is the blue line, the top path is the red line, and the middle path is the yellow line. And all we're really saying here is that if you look at the kind of sidebar here, this is the cost per beast point. Um, and there's nothing that costs more than $2,000 per beast point. There are things as low as $500 per beast point. You can notice a very easy, very reasonably recognizable trend here, that as the tiers go up, it costs more to get each beast point. So, for the tier 1s, tier 2s, and tier 3s, it slowly goes up. There's not much of a difference. Very, very, very easy to understand using tier 1s, 2s, and 3s going to save you a lot of money, but of course going to use a little bit more space. As you get to the tier 4s, huge jump. If you're just going tier 4s, you're paying almost double per beast point to go for these guys. Very ineffective as far as getting more popping power with your beasts. And once you get to the tier 5s, even less beyond that to afford the beast points. But at that point, it really doesn't matter as far as beast points are concerned, because tier 5s, you have to get that to get a tier 5. Or you could just spam 65 tier 4s if you wanted to, instead of going for a tier 5 anyways. So that's kind of like up to you based on how you're feeling and how things are actually going. Um, keep in mind also that as the tiers go up, you're probably spending more money, but you're also probably getting more popping power out of your beasts. So you're kind of making a trade-off here. Do you want to use a bunch of low-tier beasts and then just merge them and get rid of them right away? That will be the most effective way to use your beast points. Or if you're planning on using them for popping power for a little while to actually pop things and you just want to get three or four T-Rexes, that is totally reasonable to do. But once you merge them, you are spending more money per beast point, which means you are being less effective with your game. Are you feeling amazing? Are you feeling like you're absolutely jacked and every day is just the most wonderful thing ever? Or maybe you're feeling terrible and depressed and sad and all that stuff. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that that's happening to you. But if you want to use my Nexus support code, that would help me out. That would make my day great. So feel free to do that if you want to and uh, enjoy the show. So I'm not going to get rid of that chart. I just want to leave it in the bottom there because that took me like a half hour to make. And I, 
I just shouldn't should have taken me that long, but it takes a long time to math these guys out, add them all up, and make sure that everything actually makes sense before you upload it to YouTube, because I don't want people complaining to me too much, right? So anyways, what this is basically saying is that if you wanted to get a nice tier 5, obviously you need the four different beasts up to tier 4 to make that happen. But if you were just going to chill with just a T-Rex and not go up to a tier 5, there's ways to make this guy a 64 out of 64 T-Rex more effectively. So I know I'm really beating you guys upside the side of your head right now with a big fat hammer just to say like, hey, remember this crap. Understand this crap. But I want to make sure people understand this because this is early on in the game. So let's say I use one of the most efficient things, not the most efficient, but one of the mo one of the most efficient uh, uh, beast points here, a Velociraptor, third tiers. I would say it's a good space saving way to not use up all of the space all over the map while still being able to get things for fairly cheap. If I decided to get six of these guys, six times eight is 48, and I need another 48 to max out my T-Rex here. So this would be in a very efficient way to merge my T-Rex and make him the most powerful T-Rex he can be without ending up wasting a bunch of money. So this would be a great way to do it. Uh, if I wanted to, I could also go for, um, I think it's, what is it? Uh, how many is a second tier here? Oh, I already built third tiers. So a second tier would only be a total of three. So I could also do the exact same thing with 12 of these guys. And it would be slightly less expensive, but probably not worth it for the amount of money we're saving here. It would only be in the hundreds, probably. I didn't do the math, but hundreds, may maybe, maybe a thousand dollars, something like that to get this T-Rex maxed out. And now I've got this T-Rex maxed out for a very efficient amount of money. So this is the way you should probably play with beast handlers. Use six of these guys to upgrade to a tier four, because I think this is what most people are going to be stuck with, not spamming tier fives all over the place in most games. Just really quickly, I wanted to say the last thing I want to talk about before we jump into the popping power science aspect of this is that if you were planning on getting a fifth tier at any point, this would be a null and void strategy. You would have to spend the additional money to get those T-Rexes to make sure you get four T-Rexes basically to get this guy going because you need four four tier four beast handlers to make this happen. Now you could also just upgrade these guys as you want, and that would be a reasonable way to do it. You can get four of these guys, uh, or total, and then when you get this guy, even though it was maxed at 60 before, now it's all the way up to 108 out of 132 instead of just 84. So you didn't waste any money or time or anything like that. You just upgrade these guys as you want to max out your freaking Gigantosaur. So that's probably one of the most effective ways to play this game without wasting too much money, but it's not really up to me, and if we do max this guy out, bam shazam, we get everybody going here and get a fully, full-on, maxed out- hold on. I've been calling him a, gi a Gigantosaurus, and some people in the comments have been telling me, Chris, it's not a Gigantosaurus, it's a G Giganotosaurus, okay, Giganotosaurus, and while G Giganotosaurus can be said, it definitely does not roll off the tongue. I'm just not going to lie to you guys at all. I'm going to say Gigantosaurus forever. And if you hate me for it, I'm sorry. It's kind of like the common nickname of the dinosaur anyways. And I think everybody pretty much knows what you're talking about. It's a giant dinosaur. All right. I think like a lot of people even probably... Uh, it's just... Uh, I don't want to get down too deep on the name of this freaking dinosaur. But it comes from Giga. Right? Giga means big. And you could say a, gig a Giga Notosaurus. But then somehow it turned into Jigga, and that sounds even stupider. So I'm going to stay with Gigantosaurus, just because I think it sounds way more fluid than saying Giganotosaurus or Giganotosaurus. Next up, we're going to do some experiments in sandbox mode. This is not perfect, by the way. This doesn't help us understand abilities or whether or not overclocking works or alchemy or villages or anything like that. All it does is try to give us a base understanding of how beast power is going to affect these guys and whether or not it seems to be worth it to upgrade these guys based on their beast power. So what, I've gonna, what I'm going to start off by doing is by building all four types of uh, beasts here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to send out 500 of these balloons right here. Now, these balloons are technically kind of unpoppable. Uh, they have like a, a million or 10 million total pops available to them. And what, all we're really watching is the pop count. Is How is the pop count going to be affected based on which one of these guys is attacking? And we're going to let the 500 fully go through this uh, defense here, and then we're going to compare. All right, guys, this is the first chart in the series of everything. Um, this is hopefully going to help us understand how much money we're spending versus how many pops we're getting out. Again, this is not with round 63, round 98, blah, 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 blah. We could test it out with a bunch of different rounds here, but this is just with those random stupid balloons that are kind of imaginary. But they give us a decent idea of what we should expect out of a regular game or total possible popping power. 
So uh, you're going to notice that there's kind of a few lines here that uh, sort of jut just a little bit. For overall, we're fairly linear. Um, which means basically it doesn't matter too much which beast you're going for, but it seems like one of the bigger jumps, if you see the, the highest rise over run, basically, uh, is between roughly like 1,000 and 3,000, which means that big jump for Tier 3 is probably our best bet. Um, and then as we go from Tier 3 to Tier 4, we start to level out a little bit, but then I want to show you one other chart here. This is the other chart, which does include the Tier 5 as well. And then when we overlay this, you're going to notice something really crazy. Obviously, the entire straight line here from uh, the very, very bottom of the screen all the way to the top here in the bot top right is actually just one straight line of the Gigantosaurus money. Everything else in this tiny little baby bar at the very bottom is the other four tiers, which shows you how linear that actually is. It's just basically a straight line when we look at it for this distance, and then another big straight line kind of jutting up towards the top here. So what does this mean? It means Gigantosaur steeply way more popping power capabilities than the other tier four three twos and ones next up we must run an experiment with the top uh beast power of every single version so a top version of atosaurus top version of velociraptor and a top version of t-rex and we're going to see how these guys are going to end up doing against these balloons all right after all of that this chart probably took me at least 30 minutes or so to to build i was trying to figure out which variables i wanted to include and all that stuff and actually make a chart that makes sense and looks okay enough for me to show it to you guys plus having to figure out all these numbers and do a lot of math is of course not very fun but we've got it done for you guys so let's explain this chart now, this chart is all about pops, not about uh, any sort of really crazy intricacies of efficiency or anything like that. I tried to be reasonably efficient with how I did things, but it was definitely not perfect. Also, one of the things that I do want to point out is that once you get to tier 4, you're going to notice a slight dip, and that's because usually... When you're building a tier four, you have to get prepped for a tier five. So you could change this if you ended up going for a bunch of random third tier um, uh, merges instead of going for four tier four merges together. So that's probably why you're seeing that dip there. But let's get started here. So this chart is uh, basically look at the blue line first because this is the baseline of what we're talking about. On the left axis here, you're going to see our efficiency rating. All that means is that the higher it is, the better it is different than a banana farm because we spent less money to get more pops all right that's basically how i did i, I figured out this number so you notice at tier one very very low crappy micro raptor kind of sucks balls right once you get to tier two now you're going to see there's a new line up in here, the maxed out line. So at tier one, you can't max out a Microraptor. It just is a Microraptor. It's always going to suck balls, right? So once you get to an Atosaurus, you can get a level three Atosaurus or a level six Atosaurus. You can go four, five, and six if you keep going Microraptors. But I was like, screw that. Nobody's doing that. Don't need to make a line for it. So tier two, you can clearly see that a maxed out Atosaurus is more efficient. Okay, not just that it pops more balloons, it's more efficient at popping the balloons, um, uh, quite significantly, actually. I mean, it's probably about, uh, I don't know, I wish I put more lines in here, but it's probably about a 2 efficiency for the tier 2, and about a 3.5, maybe even almost to a 4 here, um, once you get up to this uh, uh, maxed out source. Moving up to tier 3, base... Kind of sucks. Not really that 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 great here um, for Velociraptors. Uh, it's got an efficiency of about three, which is not bad. It's definitely getting better. But as you max him out up to a level 24, then you can start to see the real change here. We're getting efficiency of a full-on five. And again, higher is better. You're going to see a new line coming in here, the yellow line. Now, I figured most people aren't going to be building an Atosaurus at a four or a five out of, out of six. Who cares? Nobody's going to be doing that. So once we get to tier 3, now we can go up to 24 beast power. And this is where people might start to kind of compromise a little bit. Instead of maxing out somebody, they might build a 24 or a 16. Or excuse me, uh, an 8, a 12, a 16, 20 maybe, instead of a 20 full on 4. So that's the yellow line now. And what this basically means is that the yellow line and the red line are very, very close together. Showing that a maxed out is not significantly better than just a 3 fourths build. That was interesting. Then when we get to tier 4, you can see, again, a huge dip in overall uh, efficiency, which means that a T-Rex in general is not that great for popping balloons if you plan on getting pretty much any of them. Seems like Velociraptors kind of peak, peak awesomeness, like for money spent, popping power returns. Again, only with these weird little not real balloons. So in a real game, it might be uh, a little bit more dependent on what you're doing. But all of those guys are being very, very close together, which was very interesting. Showing you how close they are. It does not matter what kind of T-Rex you're building. Just build a T-Rex and be happy with it, right? 
Um, and then lastly, but not leastly, we've got the tier 5 here, and you're going to see that zoom up into infinity. Um, clearly, the tier 5s are by far the most efficient against popping crap tons of these balloons. Um, we're, we're doubling, if not almost tripling, our total efficiency. Um, not just popping power, but our efficiency per money dollar spent. We get that much more popping power. So what does this all mean so far? Honestly... There's no direct, easy way to say, yeah, for sure, build this guy. But the general trend that I'm going, that I'm trying to understand here is that seemingly going for anything beyond a base beast handler seems to be pretty effective. So going for, uh, you know, a, a level 18 or a level 20 or a level 24 Velociraptor seems to be a very efficient tower to go for. Going for the tier 4s, though, seems to give you a pretty big dip because they're forcing you to go for that. Now, I also should be testing out what does 4 T-Rexes do compared to just one maxed out T-Rex. And that's the last one we want to test today. All right, so this is the last chart of the day, and there's not much new content here. All it's showing is a new green dot on the screen. So you're going to see the T4, uh, the tier 4 section. There's now a red line, a yellow line, a blue line, and a green dot. If you look very, very closely, I don't know if I can zoom in on this puppy, but oh yeah, we can zoom in. Do it live, baby. So this green dot right here is our four T-Rexes compared to obviously the one maxed out T-Rex, the one three fourths T-Rex, and also the uh, base T-Rex. So what does that mean? It means it doesn't freaking matter. Whatever T-Rex you're building, bro, you're going to be happy with the popping power, but it doesn't seem to matter too much. I could also test this out with two T-Rexes if I wanted um, and see how that would compare, but I would assume it would be very, very similar because it's always based on efficiency. It doesn't matter if we build two T-Rexes or 14 T-Rexes. It's the exact same thing, um, as long as we put it at the same spot, the same situations. So after all of that, we must just talk about our conclusion all in all, what does this mean for you guys? I tried to science this up for you, and I'm sadly out of time to keep on sciencing. Maybe I'll go back and do it with the other uh, water and uh, bird um, paths if you guys are interested. But for right now, this is a very good base understanding of how the Beast Handler works. And I think that if we do the exact same thing with those guys, it might be a smidge different, but overall it could be very, very similar results. So this is the first chart that definitely you need to keep in mind here, the cost per beast point. Make sure you're using the most effective or efficient beast points you can. So tier one, the most efficient, tier two, second most efficient, and tier three, third most efficient. And then once you get to tier fours and tier fives, they are wildly off off the bazoo here. It just gets crazy, and you probably should not be using those guys to boost people up. But if you are being efficient with your beast points and you're building mostly just tier threes and, you know, enter space too, you should probably just using tier threes for the most part to power up any of your guys if you can. And then that leads us to this, just this chart one more time. And all this is really saying is that they are very similar popping power to get a base, a maxed out, a three fourths powered up, um, or just leaving a bunch of bases kind of sitting all over the place. Um, but realistically, the more effective or more efficient uh, beasts here are definitely going to be things that you upgrade to top high merging qualities with the highest beast points you can get. Overall, you can see the red line is clearly the highest line in this entire situation, which means it is the best. The yellow is kind of in the middle, so if you have a little bit of money to spare, it's probably worth it to spend that money. And it's probably best not to just leave base uh, beasts unless you really want to do something weird with them or something odd. I don't really understand why you do that, but it is a possibility as well, because they're not significantly worse than the other ones. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed, uh, make sure you press that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe, and I hope you guys have a super duper delicious day.